Hi, this is Mr Evans. Uh, this is a video that looks at Grind's model of growth. I've split these videos into two to try and keep them a bit shorter because there's quite a lot of theory in this um, and I thought it would be nice to have a, a break uh, in the middle. So, um, Griner's model of growth is listed on the specification here and it's um, a model essentially that looks at uh, the different stages of an organization's growth over time. So uh, Greiner uh, is a US um, academic researcher who looked into a number of different businesses um, and identified these different stages of growth looking from small to large businesses um, and looking at the characteristics in terms of things like uh, how the organisation is structured, the different job roles that people are carrying out, the way the business communicates. Um, and these different stages of growth each come to an end where there's a particular crisis. Um, and the crisis is unique to each stage of development. So let's have a look at the model. Well, here we've got the size of the organisation. When the organisation is small, it's down here, and, and then uh, the uh, as we go up the vertical axis here, we get to large organisations, and this uh, horizontal axis represents time. So Greiner's theory is kind of that an organisation will grow in size, and as it does so, it goes through these uh, different stages of growth characterized like I say by different um, organizational structures, different roles of managers and staff, different ways of communicating and each stage comes to an end when there is a particular crisis that is unique to that stage. So you need to be aware of the names of these different stages, uh, their kind of characteristics and um, the nature of the crisis that brings them to an end. So, the first stage, creativity, is brought to an end by a leadership crisis. So let's have a look at what that might mean. So stage one, creativity. This is when the business is very small. It might only be uh, one, two, a handful of employees. Um, and so the job roles are really flexible and based on necessity. This is a really um, uh, kind of hands-on organisation. Everyone knows each other. The communication is informal, spontaneous. You know, do we need a meeting? Okay, let's meet now. Uh, we don't need, there's no need to kind of set up more complex communication channels. It's great for creativity and adaptability. Uh, you can know your client personally. Everybody knows what's going on because it's really easy to communicate. Um, however, it, it means that there's poorly um, defined job roles for people and Organisation, particularly when the organisation starts to grow, because that's what this is all about, it becomes um, more difficult uh, for the whoever's in charge to manage that organisation. Okay, a leadership crisis at this stage would be characterised by the leader trying to make all the decisions and uh, in terms of the day-to-day -day running of the business. And eventually, we're going to get to a size where where, where the, the the leader just cannot make all those uh, decisions. Maybe this is like a software company where the leader is really you know, great at producing software, but actually they don't have any leadership skills because because why would they? Um, you know, they've, they've been really successful at producing software, that's what they enjoy doing, and, actually, and, and, and maybe they've uh, gained a reputation, but now more business is coming in than they can handle and they need to, to develop some leadership skills which they haven't got. They're likely to be overworked and stressed and um, the solution to this is uh, to bring in some more direction and a bit more of a formal structure. Okay, And when we uh, get some more di direction we might actually come to what we call an autonomy crisis. So let's have a look at that. So in the stage two We've got uh, clear uh, kind of leadership roles established. Maybe we've got a uh, head of marketing, a head of finance. So we've separated the business from that kind of informal, loose structure. And we've got maybe a bit more of uh, direction in terms of functional areas. Um, the operating decisions are going to be made by the, uh, the management trying to develop new products and services still we're still trying to grow and improve our 
brand image and satisfy customers but everyone now should have a, a clear role within the company which is going to be good for consistency order particularly if it's the head of marketing making all the marketing decisions it's the head of finance making all the financial decisions you know these leaders the, the, the organization is still small enough that they've got a real handle on what's going on um, so you know we've got consistency and order because it's those same people making the decisions however it's going to be poor for dealing with uh, rapid growth because we're still developing these new products and services, new business inquiries coming in. The organization is constantly growing. And again, we're coming to a stage where uh, we may need to delegate some authority to people. OK, uh, the business is becoming bigger and it's, it's needing now some strategic direction. All right, the management have been too tied up in the day-to-day -day running of the business, uh, making the day-to-day -day operational decisions. It's not just one person anymore, it's the management team. But still, the, you know, they're still essentially running the business on a day-to-day -day basis. And at this stage, um, the organisation has got too big for that. We need some really clear strategic direction, someone overseeing everything or a team of people overseeing everything. Um, and we need to... Um, basically uh, delegate some authority down the structure. So uh, that's what we do. We, we, we come to stage three, which is delegation. And um, we suffer at the end of the delegation stage, a crisis of control. So what's going on when we're at the delegation stage? Well, first of all, the day-to-day -day operations have been delegated to middle managers. So it's not the head of marketing anymore. Head of marketing is kind of overseeing things on the strategic level. But we've got some middle managers now who are, are, are making decisions. Um, and the leaders are going to be concentrating on the strategic direction of the business, thinking, you know, one, three, five years ahead. The organisation is developing in complexity. We're going to be communicating, you know, maybe down through the structure. Uh, we've got formal structures for communication, you know, regular meetings, uh, email um, uh, trend, uh, threads that, that kind of run through the different departments. This is good because the organisation can begin to take a bit more of a long term view, a bit more of a strategic view. Um, However, it can be like it can be quite chaotic because the top managers they become distant from the clients. Before at the uh, at the previous stage, you know, it was the same people making the decisions. Uh, the top managers were were if the organisation was small enough that the top managers were able to have daily interactions with the clients. But maybe now they've started to become slightly distant from the clients. Um, the functional areas may not be that well coordinated um, because we've got the, the, the middle managers within them. And these middle managers, remember, of course, they also haven't got much experience of making decisions. They were you know, being directed before. Now they're in charge of the day-to-day -day operational decisions, actually running the business, delivering the services. And this may be difficult for them to do. So we come to a uh, control crisis where we've got middle managers maybe making uh, decisions that, that aren't that good um, and they're uncoordinated. Maybe they're not sure on the strategic direction because these inexperienced leaders at the top haven't managed to um, communicate the strategic direction very well. So the organisation is just a little bit chaotic and there's a lack of control. So, yeah, we, we, we middle managers are making decisions that aren't aligned with the organisation's objectives and they're conflicting perhaps with the other functional areas and there's basically too little management oversight. So, um, that is the first three stages of Grinders Model of Growth. In the next video, I'll have a look at the next three stages and we'll consider some criticisms of the model.